All right, so this is the uh, Skylab board. You can see my hand here on top of it. It's about for size comparison. Uh, I just got some wires on here that I had set up for testing. This is the, uh, sorry, get these out of here. Got them all tangled up a bit. Anyways, these are uh, power. So there's three power inputs. There's uh, microcontroller power, I believe this is, uh, or sensor power, microcontroller power, and motor power. So you can daisy chain them all together or separate them. So I'm gonna have the sensor power and the microcontroller on 24, and then I'll use the existing power supply for 48 volts. Uh, this was the just some scrap wires from a breadboard that I had set up to test the spindle. So the, this is all your spindle wiring. Uh, so this, this Skylab board is set up for uh, limit switches on both the uh, maximum and minimum travel. But the way that the uh, Gerbil Howl is set up for this board, the maximum uh, inputs there for X, Y, Z, and A, one's used for an E stop, one's a cycle start, and one's a pause, which I kind of like that better, so I'm going to leave that set up the way it is, and then I'm going to use these for uh, X, uh, Y, Z for homing. And uh, the interesting thing about this board is there's uh, there's jumpers throughout here that you can configure uh, for three wire sensors. Uh, th these are just uh, two wire sensors, so you don't you don't need any power. So you you can leave these jumpers off here if you want or you can convert those to proxy sensors and you can supply 5, 12 or 24 or whatever your uh, input voltage is that you use here. Uh, yeah. So what else should I say about this board? So right here uh, when I was programming this board uh, or testing it out with my laptop you can jumper this right here where it says USB and uh, you can program it using the USB-C port here. So that's a STM32H7 processor. It's running at 515 megahertz, if you can believe it. And uh, I, I haven't touched this yet, but uh, it's a Wi-Fi enabled uh, ESP32. And then here's your, uh, your motors, X, Y, Z, and there's uh, optional fourth axis too if you want to add like a rotary or something like that. And like I said, I, I tested out with uh, just some motor that I had around. This is a three amp stepper, 1.8 degree. And uh, the nice thing about these trinamic drivers is that uh, using your G code sender, you can set up uh, whatever this amperage is. Uh, typically, that's done using these uh, dip switches here. And maybe I'll get back into that later uh, and show you where all these uh, settings are located here so your micro stepping and whatever currents you have set up you can do it through software now uh, so yeah basically uh, what I'm gonna do is take this board and I'm gonna land it right in here if I can so however that's gonna fit in there and like I say, I'll take that one out, put this one in. All the all the existing stepper drivers can come out to, if you want to keep them. The other nice thing about this board, it, ha it has uh, outputs for enable step direction for all four axes. So you could take these existing uh, connectors here, take them off your board here and plug them back in there if you want to use that. But I like the Trinamic drivers. I've used them on my uh, 3D printers before and uh, they're nice and quiet and stable. So that's the plan. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of outputs that are on here. Uh, there's a serial port here, which at some point in time, I'm going to uh, add support for an MPG on here, which I typically use. Uh, I was using uh, one of these guys with my, uh, my Mach 3 setup. I, I like these things, but uh, that's not going to work with uh, this setup, so I'm going to have to find something else uh, that I can run through this uh, one of these serial ports, or uh, I might put some code on this 
ESP32, which I believe is connected to a, a UART. So I might do like a wireless uh, MPG that way and just send the uh, serial commands over. And uh, I don't know, I just got some, some of the notes here for myself from, uh, I printed out from online, so yeah, I don't think I missed anything. But you can see, uh, you can choose which voltage you want. Oh yeah, there's probes. So this thing actually has uh, two ports, one one probe for a, or one input for a probe and one input for a tool. And they're three wire inputs, so you can have uh, powered uh, probes if you want. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Uh, so four motor outputs. That's the ESP32 USB. Oh yeah, there's CAN bus and RS-485. So at some point in time, I may use this uh, RS-485 uh, output to control that drive if I decide I want a little more control over it. Uh, other than that, if you got a mister, or maybe even your uh, coolant for your spindle, if you, there's a relay output on here that, that might work better to cut AC power to your uh, spindle. And then uh, I talked about the uh, limit switches already. So that's the bank of uh, eight limit switches or, or basically just eight digital inputs that have uh, power and you can choose five, 12 or whatever that power supply voltage is that you supplied. Uh, what is this here? Oh yeah, it's just a little bit of information on that RS-485. I, I put that here just in case I decide to get into that later. And this is the spindle information from the manual here. So you can see that uh, again, that's this port and it, it's showing you, uh, you can you can combine your ground or keep it isolated if you want the uh, spindle ground to be isolated from the power supply ground because you're getting power from the VFD. So if you want to keep that isolated, uh, you can, which I probably will do. Uh, here's the, the probes. So it's showing you, uh, again, you got five volt, 12 volt or uh, whatever your power supply voltage is. And that's your tool setter if you decide you want to use one. And that one is your uh, your Z probe or XYZ probe, whatever you use. These are the motor connections. So again, two phase stepper motors. Uh, this is just giving you the pinout for uh, what pins and ports are used on this uh, processor here. The, H7 processor and again you have access to all these uh, enable step and direction pins if uh, you decide you want to use external drivers which is nice maybe one of these things fails and you still want to use this board or whatever but what else do we got here and again yeah we got that Wi-Fi interface and I'm kind of kind of interested in that so I see there's a transmit and a receive port on here and I'm assuming that that's a, a UART port that goes back over to the uh, to the core here and uh, yeah just up front this board was designed for some rep rep uh, machine uh, big tree tech worked with some company to make this board uh, I I'm not sure uh, who it is or what it was designed for. But again, there is a Gerbil HAL port to this. And uh, like I said, I initially had some problems getting the uh, the spindle port working, but it was just a, a minor configuration that I needed to make to the code. And whoever the maintainer is, I sent that off to him and uh, that's all working now. So I'm gonna get busy uh, tearing down this, uh, this board and I'll just show you guys after I get some of this stuff taken out uh, what uh, what it looks like empty and then what it looks like how I put this in there so you can see whether it's of interest to you or maybe maybe you're just interested in seeing how this uh, Scala board might work on uh, if you got a three or four axis machine or 
I know in Gerbil Hell you can set up a gang to y-axis like on my bigger machine here I'm working on it that's gonna be a gang the y-axis uh, you could do that like uh, X Y Y Z uh, yeah